Hello, and welcome back to the studio. I'm Dr. Wigo, and today I've got a new Netflix router, or router for you Anglophiles. Yes, it's the Netgear Nighthawk RS700S router. Kind of the top of the line of the Nighthawk series. And a bit pricey at $550, normally $599 on sale now for $550, and then the next one down to $600 is $499, so for an extra 50 bucks, you get quite a bit more. We'll talk about why I bought it, but if you don't need it for the reasons that I bought it, then you can get much cheaper versions. The 300S is like $279, and Costco was even selling an off-brand version of this a while back for like $200. So you can get a fairly good router for a couple of hundred bucks, I paid $550 for reasons I will explain. As always, let me tell you why I bought it. Well, if you've been watching the channel and you watch this video up here about my NAS, you know that my NAS uses 10 gigabit ethernet to connect to the Mac Studio and the Mac Mini, but my router doesn't do 10 gigabit, but this one does. So I decided I would upgrade my router. Also, my existing router is Wi-Fi 6. This is Wi-Fi 7. Faster Wi-Fi, maybe. 10 gigabit speeds. Again, maybe, but it has everything that my current Nighthawk router has, plus all this new stuff. So I bought it. Another reason I bought it is because, as you know, I'm about to retire and my income is gonna drop a bit. So I figure get a big purchase like this out of the way while I still have the money coming in from my job, which will end shortly. And then I'm set for the next several years because I mean, Wi-Fi 7 does like over a gigabit I don't see how that's gonna constrain me in the next few years. So I'm future-proofed, but let me give you a little advice. Don't shop the way I shopped. I decided I wanted Wi-Fi 7 and 10 gigabit. Because I currently have a Nighthawk router, I went and looked at the Nighthawk line and saw, found this one and went, well, that's what I want. That's not how to shop. I should have done a wide-ranging comparison. Ubiquity has some good stuff. There's a, there's a whole lot of companies that make routers. I just got a Nighthawk because the Nighthawk I have has never given me one iota of problems. Never. Nothing ever went wrong. It just worked flawlessly from the day I plugged it in until the day I'm gonna unplug it, which will be today when I replace it with this. That's not a good reason to buy something because you have one that's like it already. Although I know the app, I know how the app works. So, I mean, there's, there's some economies of scope involved in buying the brand like you already have, but that's really not the way to shop for new things. You should really go out and look and see everything that's around, which maybe you're doing by watching this video. So I'll tell you about this one, but I really can't tell you about anything else because all I've had is Nighthawks, this, this one, and then the one before it for many years. And my router before that was also a Nighthawk. By the way, when I bought my last Nighthawk, one of the reasons I bought it was because it has the big swoopy fins and it looks real cool. It kind of looks like a starship. Again, not a reason to buy a router. Buy it on features, not because it looks cool, especially since it's in a closet and no one is ever gonna see it except me. This one is not pretty, but it's gonna be in a closet and no one's ever gonna see it except me. Well, that's why I bought it. Let's see what's in the box. Okay, what's in here? I don't know if you can see that it has Nighthawk embossed on the cardboard here at the on this box. It, or I guess this box is the whole thing. Well, there's a lovely little get started guide. You scan the code, check your network security. This is a downside of the Netgear is Netgear Armor, which is their protection stuff for bad things on the internet, is a service. Now you get one year with it, but then it's an ongoing charge and I don't like that. And there's all sorts of other stuff you can do with the app that it says right here. And there's the connections in the overview. Same thing in Spanish. Then we have this little box. Yeah, again, this is that Netgear armor that they're trying to sell you. Notice that the first year is free and then you have to pay, but nowhere on here does it say how much you have to pay. I don't like that. And we've got our power brick, which looks to be about have a six foot cord, which is just fine for where I'm putting it. Oh, and a little uh, little RJ45 cable for like connecting it to your modem or whatever. Then we have the actual unit. Oh look, it has a little peel. Oh, that was nothing. And there it goes, there's the QR code that you can scan that'll get you to download the app. Not a lot to it. We have a power button and some other button. 
Oh, this is LED off and on, and that's the sync WPS button for when you're connecting things that way. I've, I've never connected things that way, but. Now on the back, here's the good stuff. We have the DC in for the power brick. Here's your 10 gig internet for going to your router, a USB port. So four gigabit ports, and then another 10 gigabit LAN port, which is the one I will use to connect back over to the office where my 10 gigabit devices are, the NAS and the Mac Studio, et cetera. Again, I don't have, won't have anything on the other side of this, so it's just future-proofing me. I'm not really gonna get 10 gig out of this. Although, with this port, I would be able to put the NAS in the closet with the router, which is in a different closet than the one in the office, which is where I'm going to put the NAS. It's still making those annoying noises. We have two more things over here. Oh, we have the power button and then a little reset thing that you have to poke down in. I've never had to use that on my old one. I hope I never have to use it on this one. So what I'm gonna do is go downstairs and hook this up, scan the QR code, use the app to set it up. I'll record that, the stuff on the app. I'll get it up and running and then I'll run some speed tests and then I'll come back up here and report how that all went and what kind of speeds I got. I don't think it's gonna be that great. They brag about the 10 gigabit tri-band. This has the six gigahertz band in addition to the 2.5 and the five gig. So again, that's part of Wi-Fi 7. Up to 3,500 square feet of Wi-Fi coverage up to 19 gigabits per second, maximum wireless speed. That sounds great, doesn't it? Yeah, that's if you have devices on all three bands and you have traffic going in both directions at maximum speed on all three bands. So saying it's 19 gigabits per second is kind of like saying the speed limit on the interstate is 280 miles per hour because there's two lanes going 70 miles an hour one way and there's two lanes going 70 miles the other way. That's 280 miles an hour. Well, no, for you it's 70 miles an hour. 19 gigabits per second is just the theoretical maximum. Also though, up to 200 devices can be attached to this. I think the next one down is like 150 or 125. The one below that's like 100. So as you go down to the cheaper ones, it's fewer and fewer devices that can be connected. I don't have 200, but I have a lot. So this will work for me just fine. It's just over 11 inches high, 4.88 inches wide here, 5.5 inches deep, weighs about 3.6 pounds, not, not too heavy. And then our Wi-Fi bands, the 2.4 gigahertz, it's four by four, 4096 QAM, 20 to 40 megahertz up to 1.4 gigabits per second. Then the five gigahertz band, BE, 4x4, 4096, blah, 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 20, 40, 80, 160 megahertz up to 5.8 gigabits per second. And then the six gigahertz BE, 4x4, 20, 40, 80, 160, 320 megahertz up to 11.5 gigabits per second. But there's almost no devices that use that six gigahertz. So, and that's where most of that speed they brag about is. The 11 gigabits per second of their 19 is on that band that you probably don't have any devices that will work on. Don't believe all the marketing hype. It has a screw hole here. I... So I'm gonna go downstairs now and hook this up and set it up and I'll, and I'll cap capture that on the app so you can see how easy it is. It's really easy. I'll come back up here and tell you how that went and show you some speed test results. I'll be right back a little longer than a few minutes later. As you can see, in addition to the new router, I also have a Nighthawk cable modem, which I bought when my old cable modem died a couple of years ago. I have a little switch. Well, anyway, you get the idea. Two hours later. Well, that could have gone better. Hey, that's what I usually say after I try to install something. I did the scanning thing and it connected to the local network and I'll put some screen things up here as I'm explaining what was going on. So first you connect to the Netgear Wi-Fi network that the router comes built in with, and you set up your admin account and passwords and everything. And I got through all that. And then stuff didn't work. It kept saying, this was kind of a problem. The iPhone told me that the connection was weird. It said that, well, I here, it said this. I didn't know what that meant. So I started all over. 
reset everything, rebooted, started over, and this time it wouldn't work at all. And finally, I found a thing on Reddit where they said the problem they were having was the cable between the modem and the router. Remember, I was replacing a Netgear Nighthawk router that was connected to a Netgear Nighthawk modem, and I was using the same cable. But then I replaced the cable with the one that came with the new router. Everything worked fine. Oh, and then I got all excited because it got to the part where it said, no firmware update needed, yay. But then like a minute later, there's like a little notification. I click on it, it says, there's a firmware update, please install, and that took another. So all in all, well, you can look at the timestamps and the little screenshots that have been go that have been going by as I've been explaining all this. It's two hours later. That took two hours, what should have taken maybe 20 minutes. There's a lot of wait three minutes for things to happen. Like when you plug everything back in, it says, well, it just waits for three minutes for the router to boot up. Doesn't even try to connect. So you sit there for three minutes and then another thing and then it goes, well, wait three minutes. When you install the new firmware update, wait three minutes and it just waits three minutes. And so there was a lot of waiting, a lot of this and a lot of that. And again, it didn't work the first time through. It got all sorts of weird errors. And then when I go look at my iPhone, it says connected. Every time I checked, it said connected at 2.4 gigahertz. And now it says connected at six gigahertz. Don't know what that's all about, but that's finally working. I also discovered my Mac mini and my Mac studio even though I have them wired with the 10 gigabit and everything, they also are connected to the router via Wi-Fi at six gigahertz. I never asked for that. Apparently, Max, it says, oh, there's Wi-Fi. I'll just go out and connect to something. And it did. I don't remember being asked, but they're connected. So I guess I'll never know if the cable goes down because they're also connected by Wi-Fi. So I don't know. So was that a worthwhile purchase? Probably not. The Netgear Nighthawk that I had, which again was not Wi-Fi 7, it was Wi-Fi 6. I don't even think it was 6E. And it didn't have the 10 gigabit port, but of course the only 10 gigabit devices I have are all on the same switch. And there's nothing the router can talk to that's 10 gigabits other than those things. So I don't really need the 10 gigabit on the router. So yes, I probably wasted a lot of money, but I have the money right now because I haven't retired yet. So, but now I'm set up, I have a Wi-Fi 7 router, which should be good for the next several iterations of iPhones and iPads and everything else. I'm all set for the future. It just probably wasn't a good use of my money right now. Down the road, when I might need to upgrade my router, I might not have the money. And I might have to go cheap out and get one that's not quite as good. So I got a top of the line unit while I could afford it. You can probably get away with a much cheaper version. And also these new ones with the, the I, I don't like the size. The old ones look like spaceships. So that was the Nighthawk RS700S router, the top of the line of the Nighthawk Wi-Fi 7 routers. They have the 300, the 500, the 600, and the 700. Every now and then, if you're lucky, you might catch one at Costco. I think it's a 280S, which is only $200. These go $279, $399, $499, and $599, except on sale for $549. Probably not worth the money. But I do have the fastest Wi-Fi I can have. I only have gigabit coming into the house, so I'm never going to get more than a gigabit down from the internet. It's a nice router. I know it'll work because I've been using Nighthawk routers. I think this is my third one. And of course, I also have the Nighthawk modem. That wasn't a terribly interesting video, was it? One weird little thing, when it's going, when starting up, Armor says, well, you know, I've checked this device, I checked this device, and then it said, checked PC. It says there's a PC connected to my network. If you're looking for a router, the Nighthawk series has a whole range, and you can probably get by with a much cheaper one than the one I got. Again, the cheapest one is 279. You can probably do better than that with the Ubiquiti or some of the others. That's the Nighthawk RS700S router. It seems to work fine. It's a router. I'm happy I have it. I won't have to think about my router again for many years. So that's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time. And I don't know what we'll be doing, but I'll see you then. Bye bye. I got to go figure out what I'm going to do next week. Thanks for staying to the end. Bye bye.